Greetings and salutations, test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. We are here every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Las Vegas times uh, to help you with content for exams. I uh, have some uh, fun and uh, fellowship. There are people in a similar situation as yourself, and uh, some of those may show up in the chat. Feel free to uh, find out what's up. So uh, let us know what series exam you're taking and where you're joining us from. Uh, we'll take care of some housekeeping real quick, and then we'll get underway. Uh, if you do have a question, it's helpful for me to pull it out of the chat because, you know, a lot of people are just chatting back and forth about their study execution of the study plan, their, you know, victor victory on the test, their upcoming test date. If you tell me, uh, you know, put a Q, a SIE in caps, or S66, X7 with a capital Q, followed by your question, that will be a little easier for me uh, to pick that out of the chat. It also is helpful if I know what exam, because there are things that overlap from exam to exam but are tested a little differently. So uh, that would be helpful. Uh, if you uh, need a paid supplement, I highly recommend uh, the Kaplan Q Bank as a paid supplement, but any Kaplan product or service, you can get a 15% uh, discount at checkout with my Guru 15 discount code. And Brian Lee, uh, who I usually uh, collaborate with, and he joins us on most Tuesdays, but he's at a ball game this evening. So, but Brian has been kind enough, he's the test geek, to give 20% discount to our viewers and subscribers. And that discount code is Guru20. Uh, uh, we have just finished up an SIE a podcast series that's available on both the YouTube channel and Spotify. Uh, I've got the first two episodes done of our near new Series 7 exam podcast. And the third episode will be Equity Securities uh, coming shortly. Brian and I are working on a uh, podcast episode on the 66. And we're kind of uh, looking to get the next episode out uh, next week sometime. So we're trying to combine our playlists on the channel. We typically have three playlists. We have a playlist of lectures, a, play with, a playlist of practice, test, and questions. And we have a uh, now a playlist of uh, podcasts that accompanies each of those series as well. So the best way to use the channel as a free supplement, there's no better free supplement, is to find your playlist for your series exam. The playlists are in suggested watch order and the videos within them are in suggested watch order. So if you want to binge, that's the way to do it. If you're looking for a particular topic, which happens quite a bit, do you have a video on? If you just go to the channel search bar and you put that in there, like accrued interest or you know, spread or whatever, that particular topic will come up in the videos we have available. So that's how you find a particular item if you're trying to find that. So, you know, that's how we organize the uh, the channel. As I said, these live streams are also available as a podcast afterwards on YouTube and Spotify as well. Uh, we do a drawing. I think I'm caught up with everybody but Ivy on the uh, coaching call. We do a coaching call drawing at the end of each session. It's 30 minutes. Now, paid activities of myself come first. And this isn't something that floats around. So I ended up having like four coaching calls that I need to kind of schedule. So moving forward, that's not how it's going to work. If you win the drawing, your coaching call is on January 16th at 345 Pacific time. I already have created a link for that. You must claim it within one hour. I get people calling me months later that they won this thing. If you do not respond within one hour, you did not. Uh, win the coaching call. So, you know, I don't want to have a bunch of contingent liabilities to people floating around. So just remember that when we get to that drawing later on this evening. Uh, I have uh, put on the chat on my booking page, uh, everything on the channel is free. And on the booking page, I do have, uh, you know, where you can book tutoring, you book some of the classes. I'm going to be booking, uh, putting on that page some classes for the first quarter that we offer in the evenings. Uh, you can check out replays of last year's classes in that uh, playlist. But most importantly, next week after the live stream, I'll be doing what I uh, do every once in a while, which is called a live stream overtime session where you'll join me on Zoom. I have a whiteboard. And for example, we had somebody wanted to talk about advanced options in the live stream. It doesn't lend itself well for that. That's capped at 10 people free. So once there's 10 people, that class will disappear. It'll close out. So if you want to join me next Tuesday after the live stream and you have some questions and uh, lends itself to whiteboard like straddles or spreads or whatever, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, for people who have purchased a class from me or purchased tutoring, uh, there's also free office hours. Those are available to people who have uh, paid paid activities. 
uh, let me know uh, by email uh, what you would like an evening class in, because those are going to be going up uh, on the schedule here rather relatively quickly. All right, so let's get started. Let's see what we got going on in uh, comments. Do, 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 do. Series 7 from Florida. Well, well, I hope uh, your Florida weather is better than what we're having out here. Uh, I always thought Florida was kind of fun, but I just can't handle hot and sticky, and the humidity was too much for me, right? So what's Florida? Used to, I was in Houston when I was 100 degrees and 100% humidity. Series 65, Casey, as I told you, that's a real challenge. Good looking group there you got there, your tribe, it looks like, or your cohort. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's a challenging exam. Uh, Casey won two coaching calls in a row. And we did her coaching call, uh, I think yesterday. She was kind enough to send me a copy back of the video. And uh, the first part of that video, we got a whiteboard. And I think we did some pretty good work on present value, future value, uh, uh, rate of return, internal rate of return. If you want to check that out, that's now available on the channel. Cleveland, I think that's Cleveland, CLE. Florida, looks like Florida. We got a lot of Floridas. Nico, Nico, man, Nico was on top of his form. You want a coaching call? That's now available. Him and I did 20 questions. Man, I was very impressed with Nico's performance on those 20 practice questions. We picked uh, options, munis, and mutual funds to do. And uh, boy, what an impressive performance by uh, Nico. Uh, check that out. That's now available on the channel as well. 65 from Ohio. Uh, thanks for joining us from Facebook, Latanya. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, we broadcast to Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and uh, X, I guess, formerly known as Twitter. Our platform of choice is YouTube. We we'll always love it when I see somebody from LinkedIn or Facebook, so uh, welcome. 63, uh, make sure you check out Latanya. I'll put in my video uh, description the replay. In this replay, I'll link to a very good video I have for 63 called The Mighty 90. It's 90 minutes on the 63, and it's very target-rich in terms of what you could expect to see. So I'll link to that, LaTanya, for you. And I also I have a very popular series, Your Series Exam in 60 Minutes. And so I have a, a, another video I'll put in the video description for you uh, on the 63 in 60 Minutes. So those are two I would recommend for you. Oscar, Dean, always a pleasure. New Year's to you and your family. Thank you. Uh, always grateful for your help with all your exams. Very gratifying when I can help people like yourself. I'm on four, a month four now. Live advisor. Woo! -hoo! So Oscar is now uh, using his registrations to help clients and make some money. I love it. If you are poor and you deserve to be rich, then our industry is for you. I'm not saying Oscar's poor. Maybe he came to our industry already rich. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, you know, you, sometimes we don't want to hire people that aren't uh, uh, long-term greedy, I guess is the way to say it. <laughs> 66 from California, Trish. What part of California? I spent most of my career in California. All right, Yeti, another from Facebook. I love it. I love it. Uh, can you send us a link for the Kaplan Q Bank? Only found the study packs on there. Uh, Matthew, I'll put the link in the uh, video description. Uh, when we're done, I'll put it there. I, I don't know how to go grab it without uh, potentially jeopardizing the live stream. So uh, just uh, circle back on the replay and I put it there for you. And then remember, your 15% discount at checkout is Guru15. So I will definitely do that. Uh, Matthew, uh, if you could tell me what series you're taking. If you want, Matthew, you can send me an email. And just uh, send me the email and tell me what series you're taking. And then I can actually send you the link to that particular series, QBank. And uh, that would, might be an easier way for you. My email is deantheseries7guru at gmail.com. So feel free to send me an uh, email, and I'd be more than happy to uh, send you the link. Let's see. So that was do. Uh, boom. We did that one. All right. There we go. I love it. I call that the test-taking registration hat trick. So, Ethan, congratulations on the uh, test-taking registration hat trick. I don't know why you would not want to listen to me about test content, but I always love it when you have a victorious test taker in the house like Ethan. And if you're taking the SIE, the 7 or 63, you might want to ask him, you know, what was his favorite videos or what would he recommend to you in terms of a, your testing journey? I'd be careful about putting too much weight in somebody else's draw because every draw is random. 
You know, I just uh, did a debrief with a guy who took his 24, and uh, his second draw of his 24 was much different than his first draw. So, you know, but that being said, it's always good for morale to be talking to successful, victorious test takers like Ethan. So good as Ethan. Yeah, I, I don't... Um... I, I don't think you need to memorize that, to be honest with you, Clucks Buster. The one that is important on the test is a muni bond purchased at a premium. You know, the, the OID and the secondary issue discounts are just recognition test questions. The three styles of test questions you get are recognition, practical application, and judgment. And on the OID version of this, straight line amortization, upward accretion, it's just recognition. You don't have to do anything other than that. And know that, you know, it's taxable if it's a treasury strip, for example. You know, an OID issued by the treasury is called a strip. Another term for that is zero coupon bond. If it's a corporate bond, that's going to be taxable. The one that does show up on the test about 50% of the time, probability wise. Half the time I ask people, did they have to deal with this? They say no, and half the time they say yes. And the one you need to recognize as a test waker, now I'm assuming, Clucks Buster, you're taking Series 7. So if you're taking Series 7, this is for you. If you're not taking Series 7, then this is not for you. The live stream is for any FINRA or NAS exam. But the uh, when you buy a muni bond at a premium, you know, so example, I go into the secondary market and I buy 100 uh, muni bonds for 120 that's $120,000. And, you know, the IRS thinks that if Dean is buying 100 muni bonds at a premium, that that's not my only investment. They think that I have other things in my portfolio. They're correct. And they think that what I'd like to do is realize that loss because, you know, there's a 20,000 built in loss by buying these at 120 and holding them to maturity. And they're right there, too. The IRS says that when we buy a muni bond at a premium, we have to do straight line amortization downward. So that's our first test issue. As a test taker, we got to recognize a question where they give us a muni bond purchased at a premium. Now, again, this isn't testable. This is not testable. But straight line amortization upward is called accretion. Straight line amortization downward is called decretion. And that's what we're going to have to do here. So in my example, let's say that there is uh, 20 years to maturity. So I, I say, okay, well, I'm losing $200 over 20 years. I just made that up. And so what the IRS is, says is, Dean, you got to take this in little itty bitty hits along the way. So I'm going to have to adjust my cost basis. So after that first year, my adjusted cost base is going to be $1,190. Second year, $1,180. 1170, so on and so forth. So that's our first test question. They might point blank say, how much do we need to adjust the cost base each year? And we would say $10. Second potential test question. After holding it for X number of years, what is my adjusted cost base? So maybe they say I've held it for, you know, eight years. So I say, okay, well, $10 a year times eight. I should have uh, adjusted it by $80. So my adjusted cost base is $1120. That's test question number two. Uh, test question number three is then I sell it. I don't hold it to maturity and I sell it for, you know, $1140. You know, if I sell it for more than my adjusted cost base, it's a gain. Less than that is a loss. So that muni bond at a premium is the one that is most likely to show up on your Series 7 in terms of practical application. Now, I debate whether I should even show that to you because. God forbid you start in trying to decrete everything you bump into and you're going to get more questions wrong than you get right. But yeah, oh well, right? So I hope that was helpful. And uh, like I say, so uh, I'll link, uh, Clux Buster, I'll link in the video description to a video where you can watch me go through that with someone uh, in terms of how to do that. I think, I don't know if, uh, uh, did I see uh, Nico? Nico, you weren't here. Didn't we Didn't we have one? Nico was tearing it up yesterday, Clux Buster. Go watch that. I think Nico, didn't we have like Nico three or four of those yesterday? Boy, Nico just nailing it. The only thing I suggested to Nico when he was uh, on top of his form is that, uh, you know, he write down the math as he goes. <laughs> so that you're not, you know, uh, you know, you get all the math done and then, you you know, you, you don't have it written down on your scratch paper. But I think he was killing. He was killing on those kind of questions. Uh, thank you, Dean. Just passed the Series 7. 
Yeah, I have lots of option videos, Cora. Boy, I have uh, probably too much. I mean, you know, abundance, I think, is better than scarcity. But I get people all the time, oh, my God, Dean, there's a thousand hours of video content, 700 videos. I go, yes, there is. I have an options playlist. I put them in order. So the first three are, I think, the most important. But, uh, you know, uh, if you watch all my options videos, you should be in pretty good shape. Um, it, the key on the options is make sure you understand contract specifications. You're not struggling with a short put as an obligation to buy the stock. And then being able to track money in and out. If you are good at contract specifications, you can track money. You're going to get every option question right. And that's like 20 points. So I'm glad to hear that, Cora. You know, the three biggest areas on Series 7 <coughs> are options, munis, and mutual funds. Uh, hi, Dean. Getting ready to take my 10. Woohoo! Sales supervisor in the house. Or I should say would-be sales supervisor in the house. Uh, I am doing pra 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 perfect practice test. Any particular area you suggest to put some extra time in, uh, thank you. Um, this 10 is a real slog, a real slog. Uh, we had somebody uh, last week in the live stream was taking the 24 and uh, did pass this week and said that the advice that Brian and I gave him was very uh, on, on target. And I'm going to give you the same one. Uh, a lot of it is taking care of the customer. So customer protection in terms of supervision of reps. And unfortunately, you got to believe in human depravity and original sin as a sales supervisor, that if you weren't there and there weren't any rules, things would soon be running amok. So I would pay attention uh, in particular to sales supervision. That is the biggest category. And then I would just warn you, that's a real slog. I don't know if you already got your nine done, but if you haven't, the 10, once you get the 10, the, the nine should be, you know, a, a cakewalk. Uh, I do have a video, Dave. I have a play playlist for the 10. I've been thinking about not breaking it out. It's, it's a 910 playlist, but I will link for you, Dave, uh, in the video description uh, where you can watch me do a series 10 practice exam. You can hit pause, you know, pick your answer, and then, you know, hit play and you can watch me do it. It's a Kaplan practice exam, which might be pretty good because that would help you confirm past perfect series 10 content. With Kaplan, what you're looking for is if, you know, Kaplan talks about it, Past Perfect talks about it, confirmation it's on the test. No, Past Perfect talks about it and Kaplan doesn't talk about it, well then, or vice versa, maybe it's not a big deal. Uh, Nico, in the house, questions regarding CMOs and their relationship to prepayment risk and reinvestment risk due to interest rate volatility. So let's start with, let's start with uh, mortgage-backed securities. You know, the one that shows up on the test is Ginny Mays. And so, Nico, if you and I both put 25 grand in the same Ginny May pool of mortgages, our checks would look exactly like. Boring. You know, and one of the risks we have in a mortgage pass through security like a Ginny May is that if interest rates go down, everybody's going to refinance. And this money's going to come back to us quickly. Test question, Ginny Mays, we don't have any credit risk because they have the full faith and credit of the United States government. But Nico, we do have interest rate risk in both directions. Now, we're not going to be happy if everybody refinances because now the money comes back to us quickly. Sooner rather than later, we got to reinvest it today's lower rate. And Nico, we're not going to be happy if interest rates go up because nobody's going to refinance and we're going to be stuck in this thing for a longer time. It'll extend. And so, you know, the Ginny May investment has an indeterminate maturity. Unlike a bond, we don't know when this thing is ending. It could end sooner, it could end later, depending on interest rates. It's fully taxable. So, uh, you know, one of the legends in our business, Nico, is a guy named Michael Van Ros. And Michael Van Ros went to Ginny May and said, listen, I don't want to buy proportion ownership in the Ginny May pool. I would like to buy the entire pool of mortgages. And they said, Wow. You know, investment bankers in structured finance, Nico, have discovered that you can make more selling things by the slice. And you can get more money if you give it a fancy French name. You know, uh, I'm not going to get much for snails with butter. But, you know, escargot and burr, now we're talking. Right? So uh, the fancy French word for slice is a tranche. If I say I want to get a tranche of pizza, you know, that's what it is. Now, what uh, we're going to do now is carve this mortgage pool into cascading cash flows. Cascading cash flows. We're going to have 
you know, people are going to get paid sooner. People are going to get paid later. That's a little more exciting, Nico, because now our checks aren't going to look exactly like it because it depends on what tranche you'd like to pick. Do you want less risk or more risk? You know, I saw one of these guys in structured finance say, hey, I just kind of carved a mortgage pool into 150 different tranches and everybody thinks they got the best tranche. You know, now why is this on your test, your Series 7? Because this isn't a retail product and retail customers get confused about whether they're buying a Ginny May pool. You are not. You're buying a cash flow from a Ginny May pool. That's an entirely different proposition. You're buying what's called a derivative. So collateralized mortgage obligations, CMOs, are cash flows from a mortgage pool. And it's a, a little more more exciting now. You know, because I say, do you have more risk or less risk, Nico? I'm baiting you. It depends. You know, some people have less risk because they're at the front of the line. And some people have more risk because they're at the back of the line. It's a little more exciting. You can kind of pick what kind of uh, interest rate risk you'd like to take. Now, second test question. First test question, it's a derivative product. It requires a suitability a, a disclosure to the customer. And they understand that what they're buying is not a Ginnie Mae security. Uh, second test question, the early cash flows uh, have more predictability and less risk. And those are called PACs, plan amortization classes. Those have less risk because they have more predictability. And tax targeted amortization classes are the back end cash flows, and those have more risk. And that too is testable. And again, once we've carved up a mortgage pool, CMOs into various tranches, then we can carve up all kinds of things, credit card receivables and, uh, you know, uh, non, uh, C non Jenny May stuff. And those are called CDOs, collateralized debt obligations. I will link Nico to a video I have on Jenny Mays and CMOs for you in the video replay. All right, let's see. Duration. So Anna Victoria, I'm assuming uh, from Durham. I thought you said duration. You're from Durham, North Carolina. Cool. Got it. I was about to go into an explanation of duration as it relates to the 6566. Uh, my family originally hails from North Carolina. So uh, it was always fun when I would be teaching on campuses there in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I've also been to, I'm trying to remember the little town on the river. It used to be a big textile place. Um, I want to say Greenville. But anyways, I've been to uh, quite a few places in North Carolina. Nice people. So hospitable. I was teaching at a Vanguard campus in North Carolina. And don't tell Vanguard, but boy, the North Carolina people are so much more friendlier than the people in Valley Forge and, and Scottsdale. 65 from Virginia. I spent a lot of time in Virginia. I had a, a Yeti a branch office of my broker dealer was in Leesburg, Virginia. I'm not sure if you know where Leesburg, Virginia is in Loudoun County, Loudoun County. You're welcome. You're welcome. 68, oh man, Gina, that 65 is so tough. I think 65, I was talking with Casey about this the other day. If you are taking the 65 and you're coming to it with no background in securities, which a lot of people are, right? You know, maybe they've been doing insurance their whole life or they've been doing something else. That exam is very difficult because it's a lot of stuff. And, you know, that 68, I wouldn't beat yourself up too much on that. I mean, that, that means you knew it. I mean, it's not like you were, you know, clueless. Sometimes those high but oh, not passing scores, I think, are a little more exasperating than you just completely blew it. So, Gina, give yourself permission to refresh, reset. Uh, while that is fresh, I'll link, Gina, to a video on uh, that I made called You Failed. Is it over? Uh, spoiler alert, the answer is no. But it's my five recommendations about how you should respond to that testing misfortune. And I'm going to tell you the first step I want you to do why the fresh is hurt. Uh, hurt is fresh. I want you to go get the 65 test specifications published by NASA. And I want you to do an intellectual debrief with yourself, an intellectual inventory. What I want you to do is go through each item that they're going to test you on, Gina, and put a plus, zero, or minus. Plus, Gina, means you think you were above par. It wasn't a problem. Par being passing. Zero means you were at par. And uh, minus means you think you were below par, below passing in that particular topic, and you can work on that. Counterintuitive, but we're hoping there's a lot of minuses that we can do. Now, you also could match that up with your printout, and that would be helpful to you as well with your actual printout because that matches up to the document I'm suggesting to you. So that's what I would suggest. I'll link to that video for you. While the hurts for us. Once you do that, you do that debrief with yourself, then I would give yourself three, four, five days to kind of refresh, reset, 
before you, uh, you know, mount your next assault on the 65. All right. Victoria's test taker in the house. Kudos, Spencer. Love it. Love it. Straddles and spreads, advanced option strategies. I have lots of videos on straddles and spreads, so I'm glad to hear that you found it helpful. I'm always, uh, it's always very gratifying when my videos contribute to testing victories, victories like yours. And if you are taking the Series 7, you got some questions, uh, maybe uh, Spencer would be kind enough to tell you about his uh, testing journey and experience. Uh, my pleasure. My, it was always an honor to serve the uh, Republic as a Marine. And so uh, I look fondly on my service in the Marine Corps. You know, kind of, you know, Spencer, people who don't understand sometimes uh, that that's part of my personality. So, you know, <laughs> you, you hit the wrong button and a Marine shows up, you know, so. Uh, you're welcome, Donata. New York. I love New York. I spent a lot of times, I had a Marine buddy who was from uh, uh, P P Poughkeepsie. And we used to go up to Poughkeepsie. Uh, people think New York is New York City. There's all kinds of places in New York that aren't New York City. Uh, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, when I was complaining about the snow I've got in my cabin in Arizona. And boy, upstate New York, oh, they get this thing called snow effect snow. There's uh, lake effect snow. Oh my God, that stuff is a mess. Are they playing in Buffalo? Is Buffalo... I don't think they get to play in Buffalo. I think they got to go somewhere. But boy, that would be nice if they got to play in Buffalo. They probably have an advantage. Uh, on Nicole, I'll put that video up and uh, watch that video. And, uh, you know, the, the video I talked about, you failed. Is it over? The answer is no. And my five recommendations. Uh, I would suggest, Nicole, that you Google uh, the dump sheet and use that as a jumping off point for your own on your dump sheet. But I would certainly have, you know, I... I I'm kind of agnostic about data dump sheets. What I mean by that is some people find them productive. Some people do not. That's up to you. And it should be your own, not a photocopy of somebody else's. Uh, but if I told you, you could have one sheet of paper on it with anything front and back, what would be on it? And if I told uh, Nicole that she could do that, if she, every night before she went to bed, she tried to flush out whatever her model was and did it in the morning as well, because that's when your brain is at its best. You know, by the time she walked into the exam, she would be able to replicate that, and that would not be cheating. You know, I had to take a trig in college. I don't know why I'm not a math person, but I knew I was going to be okay when the professor said you could have one sheet of paper front and back with anything on it you'd want. I go, I got this. You know, I, unfortunately, I accidentally learned the information by doing the dump sheet, right? Um, I would certainly, uh, Nicole, have my matrix. I call it the options matrix. Some people call it the, the baseball something. Uh, my friend Brian, I think he calls his the the aerobics chart. But, you know, uh, you can go to my tips, tricks, and memory aids uh, video. It's one of my most popular videos. I'll put it in the, the link on the replay, Nicole. You can get some really good ideas there. So I'd have my teeter-totter seesaw. I would have my, my options matrix. I would have slobs over bliss. Remind me where I place orders in relationship to the current market price. Uh, you have to decide where you want memory aid devices. I, Nicole, like to have my memory aid devices if I'm going to do a data dump sheet by subject area. So, you know, I would have my options stuff like in the right corner of my data dump sheet. And there I might have uh, Epic. I might have Cal and a Push. Uh, I might have Do and Send. I might have uh, Silo. Now, if these are all things you don't know what Dean is talking about in terms of memory aid devices, again, I will link to the video where I go over tips, tricks, and memory aids for the Series 7. And then it will explain to you exactly what Dean is talking about in that data dump sheet. So there's some, I think, uh, Nicole, some ideas as a starting point. But again, if you Google it, well, you can see all kinds of test takers. Now, I've seen some, Nicole, where I disagree about how important it is. Uh, Casey and I, uh, she came up with a data dump sheet for her 65. And in her coaching call, we did refer to it. And I was kind of commenting on what I think she should add or subtract. So if you do that, Nicole, I'm more than happy you know, take a look at it and tell you things that I would, you know, not have on it or put on it. It's a buffet. It's up to you. But I've seen ones where, like, somebody asked about OIDs. And I know there's a particular uh, test uh, prep vendor who, you know, has a sample data dump sheet. I don't like it for a couple of reasons. You should have your own. But they have this, uh, I think they call it the Mayhammer or something, which I just think is a, a total waste of space. But, you know, uh, to each their own, to each their own. Uh, Performance-based uh, fees are allowed depending on the type of customer. It has to be a qualified customer, and the qualification is based on how much assets under management they have with you 
or their net worth. The test question isn't about that. The test question is the disclosures that performance-based fees, Trish, put you as a client more at risk. Because that means I'm going to take greater risk, perhaps, with your money if I'm getting performance-based compensation, right? So in a hedge fund, for example, I get two and 20 is typical, 20% of the profits, which gives me an incentive to swing for the fence. And, you know, there's no downside to me if I lose because I don't take 20% of the profits. I just take 20% of the gains. Uh, the other thing I would know is that if you're going to have performance-based fees, there has to be a benchmark, and that's very testable. In other words, to get my performance-based compensation, I have to establish what benchmark that's going to be based on. And then this is very testable, Trish, to know those benchmarks on your 65 or 66 are going to be the Russell 2000. And you should definitely know that's for small cap. You should know for large cap, it's going to be the S&P 500. Uh, you should know if it's going to be international investing, it's going to be EFA. That stands for Europe, Africa, and the Far East. Uh, I would also know there's a couple indexes that aren't used for performance-based compensation, but are still testable. And that would be the Wilshire 5000 test question there that most closely reflects the total U.S. stock market and the Dow uh, Jones Industrial Average, which uh, is price weighted, stupid, but testable. Uh, Gina, I had a question I still don't know the answer to. When is life insurance taxable to the estate? Uh, I don't think uh, my understanding, I'd like to see the, the test question, but life insurance is not taxable. And we can use the life insurance to pay the estate tax. That's the whole point of life insurance as part of an estate plan. So anyways, I, I don't know. I don't know. What, uh, I would like to see what that is. There's one or two uh, test questions. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll do some homework on that and uh, I'll get back to you on that one. I, I'm I'm not an insurance person, you know. <laughs> I joke: insurance agents sell fear, stockbrokers sell greed. Right? <laughs> insurance agents say, "Wouldn't life be terrible if?" And stockbrokers say, "Wow, wouldn't life be wonderful if?" If I'm duly registered, I can sell both uh, uh, fear and greed. Uh, Series seven, Cleopatra, Florida. We got a lot of Florida folks. Yes, we did, Nico. I was very impressed with you. Uh, Nico, well, man, he was on the fly getting all those accretion, decretion questions. Very impressive. A nine is done. Okay, so you got one more leg, Dave, of this testing journey to become a sales supervisor. So, uh, like I say, it's kind of a slog. I mean, boy, that ten is just a, you know not be, it, the content is is you know challenging, but it's mainly it's just like 150 questions. It's just a lot of stuff. Uh, Arissa stands, Nico, for every ridiculous idea since Adam. Uh, I'm joking. You know, uh, behind every act, there's a story. And uh, when we passed Arissa in 1974, the story behind that was there was a company called Studebaker. And Studebaker had a defined benefit pension plan. And so there were all kinds of Studebaker retirees that when they retired would go to the mailbox uh, for month after month and there'd be a check. And then one day a month they went to the mailbox and there was no check because Studebaker went under and so all of the retirees and future retirees didn't get anything. The second major problem we had with ERISA was the Teamsters kept lending their pension money to the mob. You know, I joke Jimmy Hoff is the first guy who turned down a loan request to the Teamster, uh, to the, the mob from the Teamsters pension plan. We haven't seen him since. As a result of those abuses, we passed the Employee Retirement Income Security Act in 1974. And, you know, some people are subject to ERISA, some people are not. So test question number one, it doesn't cover public pension plans. It covers private pension plans. You know, if I'm a private employer, you know, I'm the Teamsters, I'm, you know, Ford Motor Company, I'm whoever, you know, and I have a retirement plan, for example, and it's a defined benefit plan. A defined benefit plan is where the employer is assuming the investment risk. And under ERISA, I would be required to set aside that money. I wouldn't be allowed under ERISA to have an unfunded pension liability. As I just said, it doesn't apply to municipalities. So, you know, the, the state of Illinois has $100 billion plus in unfunded pension liabilities. These are, you know, pension benefits they've promised to the retirees of the state of Illinois, their retired employees of Illinois, and the future retirees. And again, ERISA would prevent that. 
So if we have what's called a qualified pension plan, then we have to meet these ERISA requirements. A defined contribution plan is one that most people are familiar with. That's a 401k, for example where we define to you as an employer what we're contributing for you. And the main point about ERISA is I have to tell you, Nika, how you become vested. You know, if I'm matching you like dollar for dollar on your first 3% in your 401k, uh, you're always immediately vested. That means your, your money, on the money you put in there. But maybe we say, Nico, after five years, 20% a year, if you leave, then you're fully vested. All that money belongs to you. Uh, we have to uh, manage it in a, as, a, as a fiduciary. And that means we're subject to the uh, Uniform Prudent Investors Act as a fiduciary. But that means, Nico, we should be risk adverse in terms of managing this money because, again, it's not our money and we should uh, avoid adverse interest. You know, you know having people who are, have adverse interest uh, serving the pension plan. So those are some two big ones. Uh, I don't think you're going to run into that too much. On, on NASA exams, maybe a couple of questions on ERISA. I remember there were a lot of people that were freaked at this particular company. I said, listen, it's two questions. Guess be a sign of the universe and make it up elsewhere. If you tell you miss, you're Mr. Mark as a risk, I'm going to say, well, you had bigger problems elsewhere, right? So we have to tell you about how you become eligible, Nico. It doesn't do you any good to have a pension plan you don't know anything about. So we say, you know, after age 21 and 1,000 hours, whatever the case is, we're not going to touch on that. But when do you become eligible? Uh, hey, Dean, recently passed SI. You need to pass 57 by March. Would love to know what you think is the best test prep for Denver for 57. Yeah, John, I think Notman. Uh, you can get a 10% uh, discount at uh, Notman with Guru 10 at checkout. And so I would recommend Notman to you. Notman does a pretty good job on the 57. They have some pretty good benchmark exams. I don't know if I have. I think they gave me permission, John. I do have a 57 playlist. I'm pretty sure. Even I can't keep track of my own videos. That's embarrassing. Uh, but I think I have a Notman 57 exam. They gave me permission to put up on the channel. So uh, you can watch that. I highly recommend it. You can use that to maybe decide whether you want to use Notman. I think uh, that's who I would use if I was using 57. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll give me permission to do a 79 as well. So I'm going to try and get that done. A uh, note from Tony to Gina. Keep studying, Gina. Took it three times. Boy, I love it, Tony. That's such a sign of success in the industry. I'm not uh, kidding, Gina. Uh, Tony has passed two tests, uh, his test and then a sign of resiliency. And, you know, one of my best brokers, Tony, took it five times. He used to use it in his presentation. He would go out and say, hey, if anybody knows this stuff, it's me. I had to take this damn test five times. Right? <laughs> I, I, I recommend we pass the first time. But, you know, people invest with you because they like you and they trust you, not because you can pass tests. We don't give scores anymore, but I'm being serious. When we did give scores, if you were working for me and you got over 90, I would not be teasing. I'd be saying, you know, Tony, I think I should just get rid of you now. He said, well, why? I got over 90. I said, that's why. You know, how am I going to supervise you if you're smarter than me? You're always going to be one step ahead of me. So I think I should just get rid of you now. Secondly, all you've proven is you're a bigger jerk as the person who wrote the test. You know, and we're going to spend more time with each other than perhaps our family. And, you know, why would I want to spend time with somebody like that? So <laughs> there's a, my sweet spot was like, you know, if you could get like an 80. That would be pretty good. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it's a, it's a, by the way, I think it calms down your brain too. If you do a dump sheet, the other thing it gets is your brain kind of thinking, okay, it's time to take series seven. Now they will make you start the clock. I hope not everybody does this because then it's going to boomerang back on me. But I tell people that you can pretend you don't know that because they're used to dealing with confused people. So you have plenty of time anyways. You're not going to run out of time on any of the exams. You might run out of right answers, but not time. But I would act like, oh, I got to start the clock. Oh, I didn't know that. I still wouldn't start the clock. And, you know, then they come back and say, you got to start. Oh, yeah, 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 I got to start. <laughs> so, so I do think that a certain amount of that is a placebo effect to get your, your mind because it's not a natural circadian rhythm to be taking these exams. So, you know, I have those 60-minute videos that I tell people I don't think you're going to learn any of this stuff in 60 minutes. But I think it's something that if you listen to on your way to the exam, Maybe get your brain kind of in the right uh, frame of mind, so so to speak. Well, thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow at noon. I love it, Isaac. Uh, I did see your score. I apologize. I'm having such a hard time keeping up on things, and I really apologize. I did see your score, Isaac, that I asked you to send me. I think you're fine. So, uh, you know, just uh, stay calm, cool, and collected tomorrow. 
most importantly, be confident in yourself, be confident in the execution of your study plan. And the most important thing, be confident in your answers. Do not change your answers. I'll be uh, sending you some good testing vibes. Oh, you know, sometimes I say people are taking the test and all of a sudden their mind goes blank and they can't remember anything. They go, oh my God. Now, if that happens tomorrow, I don't think it is, Isaac, but if it does, I don't want you to panic. I just want you to go, Om. I will hear you, Om. and I will astro project it all back to you. Om, Om. It'll come back. It'll come back, right? It'll come back. Uh, Tess had two questions relative to the dump sheet info. There you go. So, you know, what you hope is your, your dump sheet has uh, you know, quite a few things on it, right? Uh, oh, man, that hurts, Heather. That really hurts. Uh, yeah, options. Sure, sure. Put it out. Sure. Put it on there in the uh, thing. We'll see if we can help you out on it. Um, yeah, you know, well, I like it. That's why you should respond. I, I kind of like that you're mad. I mean, is you know, you know, I think that's a better than, oh, woe is me. You know, I, I think you want to kind of have that mindset of I'm going to kick its butt next time, right? I joke, you went in the cave. So Heather went in the cave to slay the dragon, the Series 7 dragon. And she almost got the dragon, you know, the, the dragon got her. But now she's seen the dragon. She knows where the dragon's at. And next time she comes in, uh, you know, goodbye, Series 7 dragon. She'll slay that thing next time she sees it. So uh, put that question in. I'm more than happy to take a look at it. Well, there you go. Yeah, Ivy, we'll, we'll get your coaching call. I think we're going to be slammed coming up to the live stream because it was a 30-minute coaching call. And the only space I had for you today was 4.30. So we'll, we'll get it done. And then I will have no more obligations for coaching calls because I, I caught up. I didn't see Marcel in here. I think I owe him a coaching call. But I uh, fulfilled my coaching call obligation to my uh, friend Nico. And I fulfilled my uh, coaching call obligation to Casey. And so then I knock out Ivy. And then we are done with coaching call obligations. Okay, so if the key thing about agents representing issuers, uh, I saw a good one the other day that somebody was struggling with. And the agent representing the issuer is going to be an agent if there's compensation. If I'm an agent of the issuer and I'm just representing the issuer and like selling stock to our employees, uh, I'm not an agent. Now, it's different to say that I'm an agent that needs to register. I still may be an agent. If it's a Reg D private placement, that's an exempt transaction on the federal level. It's not exempt securities have nothing to do with it. There's there's no situation in which exempt securities is going to determine whether somebody is an agent or not. You know, if I'm an agent of a broker dealer, it has no distinction about the security or the transaction. Uh, but if I'm not at a BD and I'm affecting transactions for the issuer in a Reg D private placement, I'm receiving no compensation. I wouldn't have to register. So just be careful too about this idea of if you're an agent and do you have to register? Uh, I don't think a LinkedIn user that that's going to be as big a deal as people make it out to be in terms of uh, the study materials. Uh, but there is a Kaplan question. Uh, I'll put it up on the channel that somebody sent me that's along these lines. And maybe it was you that put that put that question up. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, no, I mean, uh, the biggest thing, Isaac, uh, besides your confidence is getting good night's rest. Uh, I don't know about you, but when, you know, I'm tired, my reading skills are greatly diminished. And so I would want you to get a good night's rest if possible. Uh, maybe watch my SIE in 60 minutes. Uh, I don't want to watch that if you haven't already tonight or tomorrow morning or both. Uh, the other video I have that maybe you want to watch is Understanding Risk. That's 33 test questions. Uh, maybe you want to watch that. That's because you're going to fly by on the SIE. But basically, you should be done. You shouldn't be going down any rabbit holes. You just want to kind of you know, at this point, you're going with what you got, right? So uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, just low key, you don't want to wear yourself out. So, you know, you want to be fresh, bright eyed and bushy tailed tomorrow, right at noon. Yeah, I love Test Geek. Uh, Test Geek, uh, Brian is the Test Geek and Test Geek Exam Prep LLC, Edward, I think does the best job of turning the legalese into plain English. So I think that's a great idea. You do need to read the book and the challenge on the 65 is there's not a narrative thread to it. So it's like, it's, it's, it's choppy. The exam is choppy. The book is choppy. You know, you just got to deal with it. So, uh, but I like that. If you're, uh, you know, watch Brian's videos, 
Uh, I think that's a great way to solidify the information. Uh, Brian tells you that's a paid supplement, you know, that you should be using that in conjunction with whatever your study prep materials are. Uh, well, it looks like we've got a lot of 65s in the house today. Well, a, a proper level of stress, Justin, is okay. You know, we don't want you to be, you know, have a debilitating amount of stress. But, you know, I told you that happens. <laughs> Some days you wake up and go, oh, my God. So, ohm, as we said, just don't panic and, you know, it'll come back to you. So, I assure you. So, if you're testing Friday, this is Tuesday. So, basically, tomorrow is your last day to put in a big day. Uh, because as I told you, you got to have good reading skills. You got to be well rested. So that means Thursday, you're basically going to do the morning and keep it low key. And then Thursday afternoon, you know, put on your game face, you know, whatever you do to, to relax. You know, uh, in my case, uh, you know, I like every once in a while, if I'm trying to relax, have a nice uh, Cuban cigar and a nice uh, single malt scotch. And that puts me in the right frame of mind sometimes. Uh, I told you I'm just now, Justin, getting my off grid studio done. And I haven't decided if it's okay to light up a cigar, have an adult beverage while I'm you know, doing the live stream out there on my off-grid Gavin. Uh, uh. Yeah, I'm going to link to the video on what my recommendations are uh, for the testing misfortune. Uh, that episode is a podcast episode I made called You Failed, Is It Over? The answer is no. And in that uh, podcast episode, which I will put in the video description, uh, I have five recommendations that I think you should do in terms of response. How do you respond to that? Okay, well, it looks like we are caught up. Woohoo! So if that's the case, that means it's time for our drawing. Uh, and uh, the way we do our drawing is you put into the uh, text uh, the word. What should be the uh, word? Anybody have any suggestions for the word for our drawing? Any suggestions for the uh, word for the drawing? We need a word of the day, so to speak. Are you anybody out there? Is it just me? Pass. I like it. Ivy says pass. So uh, capital P at S S. If you want to enter the drawing, put pass into the chat. And now let me go see if I can find this to put up on our screen for you. Share screen. Boom. Now let's get rid of that. That is my boom. And there we go. Okay, so we got 13 entries. We got any more entries? Going once. Uh, by the way, if you, if you have any more questions, I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy to answer those as well. It looks like we're done a little early tonight. So I'm more than happy to stick around if you have some more questions. 18, uh, any more entries? And then remember, you got to send me the email to uh, within one hour, Dean, the series seven guru at gmail.com if you win. And then I will send you the link. It's not a floating thing. You'll get a link. You can uh, share it. You can assign it. You can do with it what you will. We do record it. We do share it, right? So uh, Casey, we shared uh, part of Casey's coaching call. We shared Nico's coaching call. And uh, I think there's two up there, uh, Casey's and and uh, and Nico's. And boy, Nico, man, I'll tell you, very impressive. Uh, I was very impressed with Nico. All right, so 20. All right, here we go. Hit the button. No, I Casey, man, if you would have won again, uh, people were going to think, man, if you would have won again, I think uh, people would think it's rigged. <laughs> right? So Ethan, uh, send me an email. I'll send you the link to your coaching call. Give thought to what agenda you want to have. It's you can We can talk about whatever you want. It's just more helpful if you have a little agenda of what you would like to get accomplished in your uh, coaching call. All right. Any uh, more questions here uh, before we call it a night? I think I'm all caught up. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Uh, last call, last call for alcohol. No, I'm joking. Okay. Well, if not, as we always say, remember, uh, we'll take a poll. Let's do a poll. Is it inch by inch? Your exam is a cinch. Hard, yard by yard, your exam is hard. 
or is it yard by yard, your exam is hard, inch by inch, your exam is inch. Mom thinks that it should be, mom's, when she hears me sign off in the studio sometimes, she goes, you know, you got that wrong. It should be yard by yard, the exam is hard, inch by inch, the exam is inch. I'm like, oh, mom, I don't know what today, I've been doing it that way for a long time. What do you guys say? Do you say it should be inch by inch? Your exams is sent, yard by yard, your exam is hard, or should it be mom's preference? Yard by yard, the exam is hard, inch by inch, the exam is a cinch. Uh, no, Yeti, I don't recommend a data dump sheet. As I mentioned, I would recommend that you uh, Google it and uh, then find out what speaks to you and uh, you make your own based on those ones that are up there. There's a gazillion data dump sheets. What I don't like, I had a company call me once and they said, Dean, the data dump sheet you hand out in class is not correct. And I said, I don't hand out anything in class. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't hand out things in class because I don't want people to have physical ownership of our time together. I want to have intellectual ownership of our time together. And on the dry erase board, I say, these are things you might want to consider. Uh, one of their reps had taken it upon themselves to make a beautiful data dump sheet. But then he was photocopying and giving it to other reps. And they have photocopied it so much that the pluses turned into minuses. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's a huge problem, particularly, you know, on the options matrix. Now, I think they should have recognized that that was potentially a typo. So again, I'm a big, big believer in making your own data dump sheet based on what speaks to you and based on ones you've seen that you think, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So, you know, maybe I'll make a video or something or uh, maybe we'll do in the, if you want to, I told you we do a, live stream overtime session and uh the next one is next tuesday 6 15 i told you it's capped at 10 folks but if you want to do that uh, we can open a whiteboard and maybe uh do some brainstorming on that let me put that banner back up for you if you want to participate in that zoom session next week after this you can go to uh, deantennytutoring.setmore.com that's free you don't have to pay for it it's called live stream overtime session it's capped at 10. and if you want to participate in that we we could get on the whiteboard and we could do a sample data dump sheet of, and again, yours would be different, but we, as we said, probably a matrix, a teeter totter, seesaw, slobs over bliss. There are some things I think I would put on mine. And then Ethan, that's your uh, date you have with me. Your date with me is uh, next uh, Tuesday at 345 uh, PM. All right. Anything else? Let's see. If we got anything else coming in here. Mom knows best. <laughs> Don't tell mom that. Oh my God. I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, yeah, I like it. I think I think uh, the way I'm saying it is the way I want to keep it. So, yeah, I like it. Okay, I'll tell mom she lost in the poll, but people said we should do it. She's funny, you know, love mom. She's retired. I take care of her. But uh, her friend invited her to go to, to, to Europe. And I thought, oh, I, I said, mom, that's a wonderful idea. I could use a mom break. I said, in fact, I'll pay for it. <laughs> so I'll get a you know, two, three week uh, mom break. So, all right. Anything else? Okay, well, I'll see you next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Las Vegas time if I don't see you sooner. I uh, hope to see you in the live stream session and uh, keep your eye on the channel. We're always adding new content, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.